We're almost done with Connect now. Uh, what is your takeaway from OC1? My biggest takeaway is that it went much better than expected. I've never been to a first year conference that went this well. Like we, we thought we had everything and somehow it's going off pretty smoothly. Uh, we learned we need more space next year. We need more demo stations in the demo lounge and we need to show up with our A game again. Yeah, I, I can't imagine it going any smoother than it did. <laughs> also, the roast beef sandwiches. Eh. Also, no, the turkey sandwich, no mustard. Eh. But, I mean, pretty good. <laughs> okay, so besides the sandwiches, everything went okay. I think that would be a, a pretty solid takeaway from an event. Uh, so I was going to just kind of ask you, because I, I find you fascinating as an individual. Uh, you, you, you know, your last name's Lucky. Clearly, you've had some luck in the last year. My middle name's Freeman. Freeman? Yeah, like Gordon Freeman. Half-Life 3 confirmed. <laughs> Half-Life 3 on the, on the ribs confirmed. Not really. Um, so yeah, no, I was just curious. Uh, with your newfound uh, wealth, what's like the one thing you might have just gone out and bought for yourself or your family? Uh, I bought I, I bought some really delicious organic uh, like cranberry juice. I don't care about organic stuff. It's just really good. Uh, I also bought Rinrar because you know it tells you to buy it you know what i'm talking about you unzip stuff and it's like please buy it this is a trial and so i was like you know what i can afford it i'm gonna purchase it and so i went through and i felt really good about myself cool so no rocket cars or gold toilets yet <laughs> no no i'm too busy i'm too, too busy, busy. I'm too busy rocket toilets maybe rocket toilets made out of gold there we go. There we go. And you know what? We could do that on the rip because you're still sitting. Any, anyone can send me suggestions for what I should be doing with, with my money. Excellent. Well, let's pivot back to Oculus. Um, I'm curious uh, what you would have to say about, you know, one thing I noticed at today's event was the lack of mention uh, really concretely about human interface device uh, for VR. And I was just curious, you know, even if you can't say what you're doing, you could just tell our viewers that you are doing something uh, with respect to human interface, and there might be a proprietary solution from Oculus. We are doing something with input, but we don't we don't like to announce things if we're until we're a hundred percent sure that it's the right thing to do and the best way to do it. Uh, I mean, we we'll share our progress in a lot of ways, but it. Especially with something like input, that's such a drastic game changer. It would be more damaging to share it with developers and tell them to target it. Be like, hey, we think this is the right input solution. You should target this. Then it turns out we're wrong. That damages them more than us not doing anything until we're sure it's the right thing. That makes perfect sense. And then uh, one other thought I had when I when I tried out uh, Crescent Bay today was that. You know, I tried out Crystal Cove. I was lucky enough to be there at CES, uh, and uh, shortly thereafter, you announced DK2. I'm wondering, will there be a DK3? Is that even something you're thinking about? We're not doing a DK3. Um, we we do a lot of feature prototypes internally. We talked about this when we showed Crystal Cove, but. Crystal Cove was um, was basically a feature prototype. It had some of our latest features integrated into it to test them. It did end up becoming DK2, but we have feature prototypes that never become anything. Like uh, even the HD prototypes we showed at E3 in 2013, and um, a lot of other things that just you know we put together internally that don't end up doing anything. And uh, Crescent Bay is basically the most advanced thing that we have that's put together into a headset internally. We have more advanced individual components, uh, but it was the best thing that we could share with people. So we wanted to have everybody who's coming to the conference see where we are and where we're going. So, like, how recent is this tech? Like, how how, how many days ago did it uh, did did you finish the prototypes for Crescent Bay? Um, I mean, the prototypes themselves were finished like mere days before, so really coming in hot. Uh, but a lot of the technology inside is a couple months old at this point. Because oh, yeah, I, I heard Brendan broke a couple last night when he was trying them on. Yeah, we try not to do that. Uh, so yeah, you know, uh, another thing I think is going to be really important for you is uh, software. And you actually had mentioned that VR Quest on the Gear VR was a uh, first party Oculus title. I was wondering if you could talk about the importance of uh, first party software and just software in general uh, for the success of your hardware. 
I think we see third-party software as the primary driving force behind the Rift right now. Um, we're not talking much about Gear VR. Like, the only reason it's announced is because it had one demo level at IFA on Gear yeah. VR, but we'll, we'll talk about it more in the future. Yeah, because it seems like you've assembled quite an all-star team of developers. Uh, to, not, to not use their, their minds to develop software would be a mistake. I understand you're focused on the uh, SDK right now, and that's probably the most important thing. Uh, but I guess, how will you uh, go on to monetize third-party software with your... Uh, are you going to do a store, or have you guys thought about that? Were you at, were you at the keynote today? Yeah. Okay. The, so we talked a little bit about this. Um, we haven't announced much about it, but there is an Oculus Home is basically a comprehensive virtual reality um, experience that allows you to you can buy content in it in virtual reality, or you can buy it outside on a mobile app or through a web browser. Okay. Uh, but we don't have that much to announce about it, but that's that's basically what we're doing. It's an Oculus store that is going to be on mobile platforms and on PC platforms like Gear VR. Okay, so you're setting the groundwork to kind of have your own app store. <laughs> yep, definitely. I mean, we, we like uh, Gear VR at launch is not going to have monetization in the store. It's just a free store, which is a lot like Oculus Share, which is the site that we have up with all free content right now. Yeah. Uh, but both of those are going to be monetized in the near future. Interesting. So the near future, uh, you know, nothing was mentioned about the consumer version one. And, uh, you know, I'm just wondering, you know, Christmas next year, maybe, should I save some money? <laughs> I know you have to ask, and you know what I have to say. Yeah. We don't have anything to announce at this time. I'm no, sorry. No, it, it, I mean, it, you know, this company's been around for barely over two years. We're moving as fast as we can. And Crescent Bay, I mean... Look at like from DK1 to DK2 to Crescent Bay, or even just DK1 and DK2. We've shipped both of those in two years. That's a one product a year refresh cycle. You can't really go much faster than that. And I'd say Crescent Bay is, it's enough of a leap to basically be a full another, you know, jump in quality. So we're, we're, we're moving really fast. No, I agree completely, and I, I think the Facebook acquisitions probably put you guys on steroids. It's helped us a lot. Without Facebook's resources, Crescent Bay would have taken a lot longer. Cool. Well, uh, I, I guess I just have one other thing to ask you. You know, we have a community, a lot of developers on our on our website on Shack News. Uh, a lot of people there, you know, are using your DK twos right now. Um, what's the one bit of advice you could give uh, a developer that's either on your platform or just in general about making a good product? Making a good product. Have other people judge it. Don't judge it yourself, and don't have people that are invested in what you're invested in. And I don't even mean financially, I mean emotionally. We all believe in virtual reality at Oculus. All these developers here believe in virtual reality. So they're going to be very forgiving when it comes to virtual reality experiences and software and products in general. You should really try to think from the perspective of a non-virtual reality super geek. You know, show it to normal people, get their feedback on it. And a lot of people will say, Eh, you know, whatever. It's just not that interesting to me. And you should take that feedback and think, you know, oh, maybe this should inform the way that I'm trying to direct my thing. And maybe you do want to make software that is only for the VR super geeks, uh, but it's good to be aware of that going in rather than trying to, you know, market to people who are not necessarily going to be interested in your product or can't handle it.